Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the Linode YouTube channel. My name is Tim and I'm a developer advocate for Linode. I also run the Tech with Tim YouTube channel which has hundreds of other programming tutorials. In this video, I'm going to share with you everything you need to know about containers, Docker, and Kubernetes, and by the end of the video, you should have a good understanding of what containers are, why and where you would use them, and how you can control them with tools like Kubernetes. In this video, I'll share with you everything you need to know about containers, Docker, and Kubernetes. After watching, you should have a good understanding of what containers are, why and where you would use them, and how you can control them with tools like Kubernetes. If you do find yourself interested in these tools, then make sure to check out Linode and utilize their one-click installations of Docker and Kubernetes that make it simple to get started. Now, before we dive into containers, we need to quickly learn about virtual machines so we can understand the advantages that containers provide. So what are virtual machines? Well, a virtual machine is simply an emulation of an entire operating system. These virtual machines share the hardware and resources of a host operating system, but run their own entirely separate OS. For example, you may have a Windows host operating system running multiple Linux virtual machines inside of it. Each virtual machine has its own completely separate environment and behaves exactly like any other operating system, except for the fact that it shares its hardware resources with the host operating system and any other virtual machines. There are many practical uses of virtual machines, and they are typically used when you need to create a separate environment to run platform-specific applications and code. However, they come with plenty of pitfalls and disadvantages. VMs, or virtual machines, are typically very resource-heavy, they require a ton of RAM, CPU, and disk space, and that's because they run an entirely separate set of processes that are required by the emulated operating system. They can also have long load and shutdown times and become difficult to manage at scale. Because of these disadvantages, many developers prefer to use something called containers, which I'll talk about now. So containers are similar to VMs, as they too provide an isolated environment to run software or code. The key difference and advantage to containers is that they don't require an entirely separate operating system to run. They actually sit on top of the host operating system and share the kernel, libraries, and binaries, unlike a virtual machine that has its own version of all of those. This makes containers much lighter weight, being only a few megabytes in size, and allows them to start up in seconds as opposed to minutes with virtual machines. Now this also allows you to run hundreds or even thousands of containers on the same operating system without the overhead of multiple separate operating systems running. Now containers rely on something called a container engine to operate, and one of the most popular container engines is Docker. So as I mentioned, Docker is a container engine. This means it allows us to create and run containers by handling all of the low-level, complicated work like virtualization. When we use Docker, we first create or select something called an image. Now, an image is simply a specification of what dependencies our containers require. For example, if we are setting up a container to run a Minecraft server, we'd use a Docker image that specifies that we need Java, as well as all of the executable jar files for the Minecraft server itself. We then build a Docker container based off of that Docker image and be able to start, stop, or delete it as we please. Now, Docker containers make it easy for us to separate our applications into multiple microservices that run in their own independent environments with their own set of dependencies. They also make it easy to scale up our services by creating more containers or instances of those containers as necessary. So now that we've discussed containers, let's talk about an awesome tool called Kubernetes. Now, Kubernetes is a container orchestration system for automating software deployment, scaling, and management. Its main purpose is to control the creation and deletion of containers and load balance requests between them. When you start working on a larger software system, it becomes infeasible to manually create and start your containers, especially when you need hundreds or maybe even thousands of them. This is why you would use Kubernetes to automate this process. Now, before we go any further, let me provide a few key definitions for key Kubernetes terms, starting with pods. Now, pods are the smallest, most basic deployable objects in Kubernetes. A pod represents a single instance of a running process in your cluster, and pods contain one or more containers, such as Docker containers. Continuing, we have something called a replica set. Now, a replica set is a process that ensures that you always have a minimum number of pod replicas running. It will automatically create new pods if for some reason the number of pod replicas drops below the specified minimum. Next, we have a cluster. Now, Kubernetes cluster is simply the set of servers that are being controlled by Kubernetes and hosting your pods. Now, the final key term here is something called a deployment. 
A deployment is a specification file that defines the different pods you'd like to run, the number of replicas of those pods, binding for specific ports, and much more. You simply pass this deployment to your Kubernetes cluster, and it will automatically spin up the appropriate pods, replica sets, and more, doing all of the heavy lifting for you. So that's the basics on Kubernetes. Hopefully that gave you a general idea of how that works and how it can be beneficial to control containers. Now let's talk about when and why we should use containers. So at this point, you should have a decent idea of what containers are, how they can be controlled using tools like Kubernetes, and their advantages over traditional virtual machines. Now, let's dive into an example of when you'd want to use containers and discuss how they can be beneficial. So imagine you're designing an online game that will run in something like a browser. This game will have many components, including the website where you'll actually launch the game, a database that will store user data and statistics, and then multiple servers that players will be connected to while they're actually playing the game. Now, each of these components need to run independently and be highly scalable. This makes this project perfect for containers. So what you can do is set up a cluster of multiple servers that are responsible for running the containers for your website, database, and game servers. You can then use Kubernetes to control the creation and deletion of these containers on the different servers based on the number of active players. When player count is high, Kubernetes can spin up more containers, and when it's low, it can shut them down to save money on usage. You can also ensure that enough containers are always running to handle the spike in usage or to provide redundancy in case a few containers die. By using containers, each part of your application stays separate, becomes scalable, and is redundant in case any pods or containers fail. So that is the real benefit of containers, and from that example, you should see how they can be used in many different types of software projects. Now with that said, I will start wrapping up the video here. If you want some help on deploying Kubernetes clusters or getting started with Docker containers, Linode has all kinds of videos and guides that you can check out that will walk you step by step through the process. Make sure to check out Linode if you are actually going to be deploying Docker containers and Kubernetes clusters. As I mentioned, they do have those one-click install options that make it super simple to get started. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in another one.